Hi gang, Rob here. It is the evening of 10 October 2016. Coming at you with a knife review. Really a knife review. It seems like forever since we've done a knife review. Oh, not really. Hey, one of the things I picked up during my trip to Escanaba last month for the Bark River Grind in during a visit at my buddy Derek's shop, Knives Ship Free. Knivesshipfree.com, the best place to buy knives, period, period, was this box. Huh, and there's something in it, believe it or not. Kind of an interesting blade, I think. Number one, because it's a brand that I think is a little rare in a fixed blade knife. This is the Mackinac, as you can see in LMAX with coca bolo handle and if you can read underneath the barcode sticker it is a Northwoods knife hmm <clears throat> I've talked at length with Derek about Northwoods his brand and fixed blade offerings and he he's he is uh, consistently frustrated um, Sometimes he sounds like he's never going to have another Northwoods, Northwoods fixed blade because he says people just don't think of us as a, as a fixed blade knife company. They think of us for traditional pocket knives. And frankly, um, the Northwoods fixed blades haven't sold well. Now, there's some history with Northwoods and fixed blades. Uh, going back into the pre Derek Bone era, Northwoods and Skagel knives were under the same ownership. Um, and for a while, Derek retained ownership of the Skagel trademark, even had some new offerings, I think, produced by Bark River as Skagel fixed blade knives. And over the last couple of years, there have been just a sprinkling of Northwoods fixed blade offerings. Most recently, the Iron River, which I don't think sold well. It was a little, um, uh... I don't know, the proportions weren't quite right, especially spine thickness versus the the breadth of the blade. It was just a little wedgy, and it had some aesthetic issues in, in the eyes of a lot of guys. So, um, yeah, it just didn't quite hit folks right, I don't think. But uh, Derek trudges on, and <laughs> boy, I'm glad he did. This Mackinac, uh, I saw it online before I headed up to Escanaba last month, and my interest was piqued. So when I was there, one of the first things I wanted to see was a Mackinac. Oh, guys, pictures don't do it justice. So here's the sheath. It is a pouch-style sheath that can be either vertically carried or in cross draw. We've seen this before. Vertical using that loop and exit and cross draw going all the way through. So it's designed for right hand, either vertical or cross draw. Um, pretty standard fare on the sheath. Interesting stitching pattern uh, because the knife does have this guard. Our stitching stops here to kind of stop the knife at the guard. <clears throat> but still allow room for it to fall within that pouch style sheath. Should I show you? Yeah, why not? Oh, guys. Just take a look at this thing of beauty. Mm. Wow. Oh. I'll show you the left hand presentation side. Very loveless. In the handle shape, it should have a nice Coke bottle profile. But I will say a Coke bottle profile thinner than most offerings from Bark River. And you don't have to look at this too long to realize Bark River is the manufacturer of this particular Northwoods model. With a pinned guard, two big old Corby bolts, and a lanyard tube. A fine looking broad drop point blade about 75% of its height is primary convex bevel it is crafted from 
L Max powdered stainless steel with Bark Rivers rather righteous heat treat. Their L Max holds an edge like nobody's business and it sharpens to an extremely keen edge. I bet you're wondering, aren't you? What's the deal with the construction? It's not a full tang knife. But two pins and a lanyard tube. Hmm. That means it must not be a rat tail knife either. No, guys, it's a hidden tang knife with a two-piece handle. And if you look closely, you can see right through here. the seam where both halves of the handle meet but boy they do a nice job there you go I think we can catch it just right on the butt of the knife but everything is dead flush there are really no gaps so basically what you've got is a full tang knife and the tang is hidden so each side of this handle is precisely milled to accept exactly half the thickness of the tang in a precise location so when the handle slabs go together I'm sure with a good bit of epoxy uh, it sandwiches the tang nice and tight and then just for overkill a couple big old Corby bolts Super handsome, super, uh, a super high level of fit and finish, and super strong in a rather svelte slicer. Uh, so let's go over some dimensions. Blade is three and seven eighths inches long. The handle is four and a half inches. Stock thickness is 154, I measure, so just, you know, Call it five thirty seconds thick, which you know for a sub four inch small hunting knife or largish EDC fixed blade, a one fifty six spine thickness or five thirty six five thirty second spine thickness seems a little bit robust, and it does have a robust tip. Uh, does this profile remind you of anything? Let me just throw in for size comparison and for general comparison. The first Bark River I ever owned, my Gunny Hunter. You can see the basic blade shape is very similar, and the length is very similar. In fact, the spine thickness is identical. Even the tip profiles very similar. The Gunny more of Gunny Hunter more of a saber grind. I guess they're both sort of saber grind, but a larger proportion of the Mackinac is certainly primary bevel. But other than the breadth of the blade, the height uh, from spine to cutting edge, they're about the same shape. And also about the same length. In fact, they're doggone near the same in every dimension except handle thickness. You can see how much more svelte the Mackinac is because of its hidden tang design. Pretty slick, huh? Might have just a little more handle length on the Mackinac as well. Uh, I think it's absolutely gorgeous. I mean absolutely gorgeous. Luxurious handle construction, strong handle construction, but with a great look, 360 degrees of that beautiful Coca Bolo. And take a look at this little knot that made it into the finished product. How cool is that? Pretty straight grain Coca Bolo, but still with some attractive figuring. How's our visual tension? Our aesthetic tension between handle and blade? Well, it's pure love less, isn't it? And that ain't a bad thing, guys. How is it in hand? Well, it definitely feels thinner 
than a similar standard Bark River. Um, is the Gunny Hunter more comfortable? It might be. Definitely more hand filling. You feel like you have a little more power. But, you know, I like the thinness of this knife um, because it's kind of a slicer. I don't know if I mentioned that. Now, you guys know that I sharpen uh, quite a few of these convex ground Bark River produced knives. And generally, and as I had to do with my Gunny Hunter, I generally thin the knife um, through its sort of shoulder or where the where the tightest radius curve is maybe you know an eighth of an inch behind the cutting edge my gunny hunter was thinned a lot to achieve great slicing performance you know basically the whole face of this convex primary bevel I have uh, thinned and refinished so it doesn't look like it's been thin but it has this Mackinac all I did was touch up about the last sixteenth of an inch of that last run to the edge. I think six hundred degree or six hundred grit paper, fifteen hundred grit paper, and my my system of straps. And let's see what we ended up with on this super limp Natchez shooter spike catalog paper. Yeah, I wish you could feel that. The complete lack of effort it has going through this paper. Ah, come on. It's hard to cut when you can't see. Yeah, push cuts. And that's after like five minutes of work, guys. Um, until I saw what Bark River could do with Elmax, I was unaware you could get Elmax this sharp. But it's amazing and it has a superb slicing profile. Don't know if, how well you can see that. Let me pull the box. Uh -huh. See if I can make it disappear. It gets pretty skinny. Did I mention how gorgeous it is? So just beautiful fit and finish. Guard, pins, wood, you feel nothing. The metal finishing on the LMAX is beautiful. How symmetrical is our plunge? Can't really see. Eh, pretty doggone good. Sharpening notch was executed perfectly. Um, I think these knives might be a little expensive. I think this one in Cocobello is fairly north of 200 bucks. And you know what it ought to be, guys. This is, I, I, would, uh, I would put this knife in finished quality right up there with the Bark River Essential. You know, sort of a, a premium finish Bark River knife in, uh, in a modern super steel. Executed very well. Derek, I think you got you a winner on your hands here. You know, I think this is a great EDC blade. I think it's a, a superb hunting knife. Uh, certainly up to and including the largest mammals we have in North America. Fully capable of dressing them out. As thin as the profile that edge is, the tip is robust. You know, not quite as robust as the Gunny Hunter, but you know, you bury that thing up to an inch in, in a joint and you're going to be able to crack it, part it. No problem. Uh, light bushcraft, light batoning, split and kindling, you betcha. You know, you're not going to want to be torquing on this knife to a great deal because it's LMAX. It's not 3V. But what I use it for, guys, it, to me it's just a great everyday carry knife. You know, if I want something a little larger than my Mini Aurora or my Featherweight Fox River, I'm either going... Gunny Hunter, Springbok, or Mackinac. You know, I don't know, maybe 30% of my days I EDC a small to medium sized fixed blade instead of a modern folder. So this fits my rotation rather well. 
Also, here's another one. Been seeing a little pocket time lately. Mm-hmm. That's the Town Creek by Jesse Hemphill Knives. Uncle Jesse. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Might see a review on that coming up, too. But, Derek, things are looking up, my friend. You keep doing it like this, people might start to regard Northwoods Knives as a fixed blade company. Uh-huh. Oh, comfortable in a variety of grips. I love this thing. I think you might, too. Christmas is coming. For all you wives of knife guys, husbands of knife chicks. This would be a really, really nice one to find under the tree. I believe they are in stock exclusively at Knife Ship Free because it's a Northwoods. I guess I should show you right-handers, the show side. That's all for this one, my friends. Grace to you and peace. From God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, and remember the word, and my Mackinac are sharp. <laughs>